Japanese has an extremely steep and difficult learning curve for beginners, and I can see why, now having gone through that process myself, why so many people give up on learning this language. And it's unfortunate, but it's understandable because it's just so damn hard to start. And there's many reasons why Japanese is difficult, um, but I think the biggest one is the existence of kanji. It's just really a pain, especially for a beginner, and it can feel overwhelming, and you can feel like you're not making progress. And so I think that's why a lot of people eventually stop and give up on the idea of learning Japanese. Now, the flip side of that is that kanji can actually help you learn Japanese. And what I mean by that is it is very difficult at the beginning to learn, but later on in the learning process, it can actually help you and it can speed up your progress. And this is kind of what I've, I'm experiencing now um, in learning Japanese is I'm able to make quicker progress because I know kanji. Um, however, I had a much harder time at the beginning of learning Japanese because I forced myself to learn kanji from the start. So because kanji is such a pain, a lot of people traditionally are not taught kanji at the beginning. So many beginners are just taught to use romaji or maybe hiragana and katakana and you know are often told, well, hold off on kanji, they're really complicated. And as a beginner, you just need to worry about, you know, learn how to speak and learn how to write the alphabet. And later you can learn kanji. And this is a very tempting approach um, as both a student and a teacher because it simplifies things for the beginning stages. But the problem with that traditional approach is that if you, if you take that path, you're going to hit a roadblock at some point where you're going to need kanji to advance. So you can only go so far only knowing hiragana, for example. And after a while, it becomes really hard to use only hiragana in Japanese because, first of all, it's really hard to read sentences using just hiragana. It's really hard to read sentences without kanji. Um, it becomes very complicated and hard to tell where words begin and end because there's no spaces. And on top of that, it's also very hard to even find Japanese resources for intermediate or higher levels that don't use kanji. So point being, you're going to hit that roadblock at some point and you're going to have to go back and relearn the kanji for all the words you know. So what I decided to do and what I'm now very happy um, that I've done is that I started learning kanji from the very beginning. And that means that I have removed that roadblock and now I'm able to really cruise through Japanese and learn vocabulary at a faster rate than I would have been able to otherwise. Now the downside of that is that it made things a lot harder in the beginning and that kind of comes back to what I was saying at the start of this video. Um, when you take this path, it feels very difficult. Um, and for the first maybe 500 kanji I learned, it felt like really an uphill struggle the whole time. And I just want to say, if you're in that stage, if you're still going through that process, don't give up now because it will pay off and things will get easier later on. This is all going to be worth it. But you have to get beyond that first, uh, you know, get over that first hill. And then things will get smoother. So I remember when I learned the first 500 kanji, by the time I knew 500 kanji, I could write, um, I mean, I knew around 800 words. And so those, those kanji that I knew were uh, ones that I learned in context of those words. And, you know, it's not one kanji per word, but it's almost, I mean, if you look at the correlation of that, which means what I'm trying to say is as a beginner, every time you learn a new word, you're almost definitely going to have to learn at least one new kanji character. And on top of that, if you're learning kanji using radicals and mnemonics and learning the pieces of it before you learn the, the characters, which is what I'm doing, you're also going to have to learn all those pieces on top of that, which means that to learn a new word as a beginner is really a big chore. You have to learn the word, the kanji, all of the pieces. You might have, you know, 
three or four or five mnemonics, who knows, for a single character as a beginner. So it feels like a lot of work, and it is. But the benefit of taking that approach is that later on, things become much more smooth. So when I got to around 700 kanji, um, by that time, I knew 1,300 words, which means that in going from knowing 500 to 700 kanji, just an advancement of 200 characters, I learned 500 new words. And you can see how the number of words starts to increase a lot faster than the number of characters. Um, and so this trend will continue as you continue to learn Japanese to where once you know, say, 10,000 words, say a couple years down the line, uh, you should be able to write all of those using only around 2,000 characters. So point being, the more characters you learn, the more they're going to get used and reused. And so the less often you have to learn new characters. And so this effect is what some people call the snowball effect. And the snowball effect is a really awesome thing and a really fun thing to experience as a Japanese learner. And that's what I'm experiencing now. And that's why I want to talk about this, especially if you're still in that beginning stage, just know things will start to accelerate and snowball and um, your progress will be able to accelerate if you make it over that initial difficult hump. So some of the advantages of this snowball effect are, you know, as you go along, the more words you know, the more characters you know, the less frequently you have to learn new kanji. So like I said at the very beginning, with every single word I was learning, you almost definitely have to do, um, learn a new kanji character, or maybe multiple characters. As I got around uh, maybe 500 kanji, it started to become uh, a little bit less frequent, meaning that I would have to learn a new kanji, say, two out of every three words, and sometimes I would see a familiar one that got reused. And if you get to the point where I am now, um, I know around 900 kanji and 1600 words, I really only have to learn a new character, say, once every, uh, once every three words. And so now things are rolling a lot smoother. And not only do I not have to learn new characters that often, um, I definitely don't have to learn radicals very often. So I'm now pretty much familiar with all of the radicals and all of the component pieces that might come up in a kanji. And so very often when I learn a new character, I'm just going to learn um, one mnemonic image for that new character. And that's enough because I already know most of the pieces. Another benefit is at this point, I can often guess the meaning of words based on the characters that make it up. So if I see a new word that uses characters that I know, um, I often have a pretty good idea of what it means. And that's one good thing is that sometimes, uh, actually often, kanji are somewhat logical in their combinations. When you see a compound word, the meaning of the character combination usually makes sense. It's usually logically associated to the meaning of that compound word. So you can often guess what words mean based on the characters. And you can even often guess uh, how to pronounce those. So very often you'll see the same pronunciations for the same characters. And this can also help you going the other way. So if I know how to say a word and I know what it means, I can often guess what the kanji is going to be. And so, for example, if I'm trying to remember a kanji for a piece of a word uh, and that piece makes the sound kai, I can often think in my head, okay, what characters make the sound kai and what one fits the meaning that I'm looking for here. And often that's enough to get the correct meaning. So that's another benefit. You start to notice and predict things and, and suddenly the language starts to become a lot more logical. And so that is a, another huge benefit to this snowball effect. Another benefit to learning kanji is that in Japanese, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of homonyms, meaning words that sound the same but mean different things. And this is partly due to the fact that the Japanese language has very few actual sounds in it. And so uh, they end up getting reused and you have a lot of words that sound the same, but you're gonna have many different meanings for that. 
So you end up with pairs like kairu and kairu, um, also atsui and atsui, uh, shogai and shogai. And so on the surface, these words use the same sounds, but they mean completely different things. And obviously while you're speaking, you're gonna have to rely on context to know which one the person is, is talking about. But if you can read the kanji, you're going to have a much better time differentiating these words, um, not only while reading, but also just as a way to keep them separate in your head. If you know there's atsui and atsui, then you can imagine those two different kanji and that helps you keep them separate. And so I think that if you were trying to learn Japanese to a very high level, not writing kanji, it would be very confusing um, just because of that reason alone. So when you're going through that beginning stage, you're struggling and fighting for every single word and character, it's really important to keep in mind that it will get easier. And in my experience, it has been absolutely 100% worth it to take that more difficult approach in the beginning because now things are starting to snowball and now things are starting to pay off. And you won't get to that point if you don't learn kanji. So you can take the easier approach at the beginning but know that you're gonna have to know kanji at some point to advance to the later stages. So I would recommend doing it from the very beginning. Buckle up, you know, do the hard work and just know it's gonna be a little bit rough for a while. And you know, it took me, I don't know, six months or five months or something to get past those first 500 kanji. Um, and if you're not studying, you know, two hours or more a day, it might take you, you know, a year or something to get beyond that point. But just keep in mind, this is going to pay off at some point. So that is the snowball effect in Japanese. And personally, I find it to be one of the major benefits for learning kanji. So I highly recommend doing that. I know most of you are anyway, but um, I just thought I would share this because it's such a cool thing that I'm experiencing now where I feel like my progress it's really accelerating and it's much easier to learn new words than ever before. And that is a direct result of having done that hard work at the beginning to learn kanji. So hope that's helpful to y'all. Good luck with your studies and see you in the next video. Ciao.